Let us all go thack ourselves like the 15-year-olds we once were over the vexed issue of what happens when fuel dilutes your engine oil. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that, or if you have a problem. Me girlfriend doesn't love me. No worries. Send her right over. After a week with me, she will think you're awesome. Guaranteed. Eugene did that recently. Well, you know, not with his girlfriend. He asked me to solve an alleged vehicular problem. I have a problem with me. 2015 Mazda 3 2 litre GDI. Randomly, I took an oil sample analysis and the report showed that there is a minor fuel dilution with engine oil. So I contacted Mazda dealership, but they said it seems okay. They suggested me to take another oil test after 1,000 Ks. I'm kind of concerned about that, frankly. (laughs) Who just does this randomly? Just decides to take an oil sample and have it analysed. What's wrong with just playing with your... (coughs) um, With your pecker like everyone else? So let's go live to the McDonald's at the Nutbag City Limits and enjoy the new Muck Oil with added gasoline. And supersize me! Yes! Oil dilution is a real thing. It's an operational reality. It's more of a factor now than ever before. And here's the background briefing on that. Fuel, especially in a cold engine that's running rich, can condense on the cylinder walls where it sort of dissolves into the thin film of lubricating oil that's resting there. The oil, only a few microns thick, is trying to maintain a death grip on the fine scuff marks that are honed into the bore, and the fuel is really not helping. When the rings sweep past that downwards, they scrape most of it off, and the oil, diluted with the fuel, is flung into the crankcase. And this is happening, remember, about eight times a second for every 1,000 RPM per cylinder. So you don't need all that much fuel per combustion event to get mixed up in this way for it to really add up over time. And the result is, rather a lot of fuel can end up mixed with the oil. It's not good, well, not desirable anyway, but it's known about and it is taken into account in R&D at both oil companies and car makers, and we'll get to that. Basically, fuel, petrol, gasoline, whatever, it's to lubrication. That fuel is what Idi Amin was to humanitarianism. And the function of oil is to maintain a tough, thin, slippery film between the critical metal interfaces inside the engine, on the bores, in the bearings, the cam lobes, the valve guides, the timing chain, all the expensive stuff that moves really, really fast with great precision. Metal-on-metal contact is the enemy of longevity, and oil is the cure. Fuel in the oil degrades the effectiveness of the lubrication because it reduces the viscosity. Direct injection engines, where the fuel is pumped at extreme pressures directly into the chamber, are more susceptible to oil dilution than the old multi-point kind. Engines that do lots of cold starts and lots of stop-start driving are more susceptible. Lots of heavy acceleration, more susceptible. And then there's the service interval, which on low mileage cars is often 12 months now. 12 months of scraping fuel diluted oil into the sump as opposed to six or even three in the good old days, remember those. Car makers really cannot win here, a direct injection being a huge benefit for fuel efficiency and all round performance, and oil dilution is a negative feedback effect that must be dealt with. However, you are out of touch with reality if you draw the conclusion that direct injection is shit because oil dilution. It's manageable negative feedback. You are likewise dissociated from the real world if you think that 12 months service intervals are a mistake. A car maker would be crucified for going back to 6 from 12. Oil dilution is a real operational thing that needs to be managed. It's generally not a defect, although there have been examples of engines with excessive oil dilution. When Mazda first introduced the CX-5 diesel and the Mazda 3 diesel, the same engine, it had excessive oil dilution and they fixed it with a software update and a minor hardware change. 
Eugene went on to ask this. I only driven 50k, but how come I got a minor fuel dilution with engine oil? Asked and answered, I think, but most likely correct answer here, all engines get fuel dilution to some degree. If you do lots of cold starts, short trips, stop start driving, it'll be more significant than if you drive regularly on a freeway at free flowing highway speeds, because that's just how this works. I think Mazda dealer, check the fuel system and crank case only through OBD2 scanner or electrical system. Will OBD2 scanner or other electric tool can help mechanic to identify the fuel dilution with oil? Jesus, this stuff is hard to read sometimes because the words are in English and the order is almost right. Anyway, I think because of the service campaign to repair early CX-5s and Mazda 3 diesels, Mazda dealers in particular would be pretty well versed in the identification of problematic oil dilution. The most common differential diagnosis for non-trivial oil dilution is an increase in the oil level. And for this reason, some manufacturers have actually started putting a third mark on the dipstick to indicate overfull. In any case, if you change the oil and replace it with the specified volume and then the level climbs beyond the maximum level on the dipstick, I'd be doing my best Tom Hanks here and telling Houston you've just had a main bus be under vault. I'm still in a warranty period eight months, but I think there is a chance that Mazda Australia slash dealer do not want to repair under warranty because at the moment my engine runs perfectly fine. What can I do in this case? I'm pretty sure my engine will die earlier than others, but they can't repair my vehicle after the warranty period. That statement is indefensibly wrong on so many levels. Firstly, the oil analysis Eugene commissioned, when he should have been pecker adjusting like the rest of us, described the degree of dilution as minor. And I think trivial would work just as well here in the context of the magnitude of the problem. All engines incur some oil dilution, and you could test every engine out there on the road right now, they'd all be positive. Therefore, this is a non-defect, and non-defects do not demand cures. Your engine, Eugene, probably will die sooner than others, especially if you do a lot of cold starts and lots of short trips. All engines die earlier when you operate them in this way. I mean, just have a look at taxis. They never go cold, and that's why they last several times longer than ordinary cars. On repairing after the warranty period, all manufacturers are required to guarantee the reasonable durability of their products. This is a legislated consumer guarantee. It is entirely independent of the warranty. In other words, the product must conform to the durability expectations of a reasonable person. This takes into account the cost of the product and the context of its operation. So if you are four years and 100,000 Ks down the track and the engine goes 100% Osama bin Laden, there's a case you could make that this reasonable durability standard has not been met in which case Mazda would be legally obliged to fix the problem free of charge. And of course, this refers only to consumer law here in Australia. I'm a bit in the dark about other jurisdictions. Any information will be appreciated, John. Always appreciate with your kind advice and what the fuck. You are most welcome. And I appreciate the intimate opportunity to fuck you, Eugene. I think in some ways it's brought us closer together. <laughs> My cock and I have both enjoyed it immensely, I must say. My general advice here is that the people who designed the engine know all about oil dilution. The people who designed the oil, well, they know all about oil dilution too, and the dilution is a thing that gets managed in modern engines. The formulation of the oil is such that it provides adequate protection when it is diluted up to a point of normal operation. The service interval for your car is likewise selected so that dilution does not spiral out of control. And this is why, in part, there's a time component to the service interval as well as a distance component. I guess the other thing you can do to manage the dilution on your car is either to go on long drives semi-regularly, a couple of hours with lots of lean burning on the highway and sustained optimal temperature operation. That'll do the job nicely. It's going to help purify the engine oil in the manner of burning a witch at the stake. 
with the notable exception being it evaporates out all the volatile fuel components. But apart from that, it's just like burning a witch at the stake. Very therapeutic. Alternatively, you could just change the oil a bit more frequently if you only do those short trips. If engine longevity is important to you, you need to realise that a harsh operating environment for oil is not the kind of thing that you might imagine. One of the harshest things you can do to oil down there in the sump is to cold start, drive to the station 10 minutes away, catch the train to work and drive back 10 hours later. Repeat five days a week. That's like a month at the Hellfire Club for oil. So just change it more often, twice as often. And the filter. Pretty simple fix, I'd suggest, and not all that expensive. P.S. I did not just make that up. Many owner's manuals in cars recommend changing the oil more frequently in harsh operating environments or as advised by the dealer. Unfortunately, it's not routinely communicated that driving like grandma to the shops constitutes a harsh operational environment for your car. I think car makers are afraid that no matter how creatively they craft this advice, it will still be perceived, at least in some camps, as if they are merely smearing icing sugar upon a bullshit birthday cake. It often doesn't occur to them that upfront honesty using actual facts would be an effective messaging tool. I don't know why. You should check the oil level once a fortnight or every second time you refuel the car In the domain of ideas, this is a pretty good one. If the oil level climbs over the full mark, don't hesitate to get professional advice. The oil won't be doing its engine life-preserving voodoo if that happens, and that's bad. Some dilution is completely normal, but excessive dilution is probably a symptom of a bigger problem, perhaps a serious fuel system or inlet air problem where your engine is overfueling sort of continuously. A faulty math sensor cracked inlet air pipe if the car is turbocharged, and you'll need to get that kind of thing sorted. Minor oil dilution is, however, completely normal. So don't stress about it. Just play with... Your pecker instead, that's quite therapeutic too. And there's no shame, (laughs) that's what I tell him. I'm John Cadogan, I hope this helps and thanks for watching. 